because in 30 years I've done nothing but collect information, knowledge, and your secrets. The tension surrounding Diddy is reaching a boiling point as more voices break the silence within his inner circle. And brace yourselves, because whispers suggest Cat Williams is gearing up to unleash a storm of shocking revelations, yes. You heard it right, Cat's got some eye-opening tales from his time rubbing shoulders with Diddy, and trust me, it's far from a walk in the park. And what's more, this buzz is sending shockwaves rippling from coast to coast, possibly linked to a recent raid that rattled the serenity of Diddy's lavish abodes, even putting his children in the crossfire. Before this seismic event rocked his world, murmurs hinted at Diddy's involvement in shadowy dealings behind closed doors. And now, Cat appears chomping at the bit to shed light on some of that concealed intel. So, the burning question gripping everyone's minds, what skeletons are lurking in Diddy's closet? It's time to roll up our sleeves and delve deep into the tantalizing details. For those lagging behind in the gossip game, here's the skinny. Diddy's extravagant pads in Los Angeles and Miami were hit with unexpected raids. Looks like he's firmly in the crosshairs of a federal investigation spearheaded by the authorities in New York, specifically the U.S. Attorney's Office. But wait, there's more word on the street has it that the Department of Homeland Security is also getting in on the action. These aren't fresh off the press. Several lawsuits have already been fired at him in the concrete jungle of New York City. Oh? The scandalous saga continues to unfold, painting a picture of intrigue and deception that keeps us all on the edge of our seats. The stakes are soaring as whispers of past accusations against Diddy resurface, fueling the flames of speculation. Last December, one such lawsuit escalated to federal court, hurling grave allegations at the hip-hop mogul. While Diddy has brushed off such claims in the past, this time, the legal heat is cranked up to the max. Enter Homeland Security Investigation HSI agents, storming Diddy's properties with a vengeance, fueled by suspicions of private security lurking within their mission. To seize documents, cell phones, laptops, and any other electronic treasures that might hold damning evidence. The HSI office in New York spilled the beans, revealing that these enforcement maneuvers were part of an ongoing investigation. Conducted hand-in-hand -hand with local law enforcement and HSI units in Los Angeles and Miami. Stay tuned for updates as this gripping saga unfolds. Whispers abound that Diddy slipped away from his mansion just before the authorities swooped in, narrowly dodging their grasp. While they missed him, they didn't let his sons, Christian and Justin, slip through their fingers. But this move hasn't gone unnoticed or unchallenged. Many are crying foul, questioning Diddy's decision to leave his kids in harm's way, especially given Homeland Security's reputation for leaving no stone unturned. Brace yourselves for more twists and turns in this unfolding drama. Concern for the safety of Diddy's children skyrocketed as the ominous sight of Homeland Security's armored vehicles rolled in, casting a shadow of fear over the scene. Known for their swift and decisive action, the mere presence of these enforcers sent shivers down the spines of many. So it came as a shocking blow to learn that Diddy had seemingly left his children in the midst of such potential danger, rumors swirled like a hurricane. Suggesting Diddy had fled to a secluded island with the law hot on his heels. But as the dust settled, it emerged that no fleeing jet awaited him. Instead, he was spotted pacing anxiously outside a Miami airport. Some speculate that Diddy was playing a high-stakes game of cat and mouse, concocting a cunning plan to slip away from the city unnoticed. The following day, Diddy's legal eagle swooped in with a scathing rebuke of the raid denouncing it as excessive and likening it to a full-blown military operation. The lawyer minced no words, lambasting the aggressive tactics employed by law enforcement and decrying the unfair treatment of Diddy's loved ones, according to the attorney. Diddy voluntarily engaged with law enforcement officials, squashing rumors of any arrests. Oh, the twists and turns of this gripping tale. Amidst a storm of speculation, Attorney Aaron Dyer emerged as Diddy's staunch defender, adamantly declaring that neither Diddy nor his kin faced arrest or travel restrictions. 
Dyer denounced a raid as a premature and unjust attempt to vilify Diddy, labeling it a baseless, which hump fueled by unfounded civil claims. He stressed that no legal verdict neither criminal nor civil supported the accusations, reaffirming Diddy's innocence and unwavering commitment to clearing his name. As these bombshell revelations rippled through the online sphere, they ignited a firestorm of debate and conjecture. One commentator sounded the alarm, citing the Fed's formidable 95% conviction rate as a foreboding sign of trouble. Another raised eyebrows at the controversial decision to purchase property in Diddy's daughter's name, hinting at murky dealings. And, of course, 50 Cent wasted no time in taking to Instagram to toss them verbal grenades, hinting at the gravity of the situation. Oh, the plot thickens in a now-deleted Instagram post. 50 Cent couldn't resist taking a jab, quipping, the feds hitting all the crips. Incredible, they even got the kids in on the action. And in another cutting remark, he cast out on Diddy's prospects for recovery. Musing, it's not a question of did he do it, but did he done it? He argued that law enforcement wouldn't mobilize without a mountain of evidence. To unravel the mystery behind the raids on Diddy's homes, let's take a quick dive into the allegations against him. The saga unfolds with the well-documented Cassie lawsuit, a bombshell dropped on November 16, 2023. In a gut-wrenching legal move, Cassie courageously stepped forward, unveiling a dark tale of alleged abuse spanning years under Diddy's roof. The lawsuit painted a grim picture, accusing Diddy of preying on Cassie when she was a tender 19, while he, a season 37, held sway over her life like a puppet master. It laid bare accusations of Diddy perpetuating abuse that cast a long shadow over Cassie's existence. From financial control to invasive access to her medical records, the claim painted a picture of manipulation and domination. In a chilling revelation, Cassie disclosed that NM, or I hinted at memory loss a haunting echo of Diddy's coercive tactics and the harmful substances he allegedly pushed her to consume. Fast forward to 2016, Cassie's bid for independence led to a chaotic showdown, culminating in police intervention. Yet, she chose to stay her hand, refraining from pressing charges. Oh, the depths of scandal! In a bid to placate Cassie amidst the tumult of Diddy's tempestuous demeanor, the mogul sought solace in lavish gifts. But beneath the veneer of luxury lay a darker truth, as Cassie recounted in her haunting melodies. Secluded in hotels, she became a pawn in Diddy's disturbing game, drawn into a web of exploitation and degradation. The tale takes a sinister turn as Diddy allegedly embroiled Cassie in a sordid affair with male escorts, relishing in her interactions with these men. The nightmare culminated in Cassie's participation in explicit freak-offs, allegedly filmed by Diddy for nefarious purposes. Far from harmless dalliances, these recordings became tools of coercion. Wielded by Diddy as a chilling threat against Cassie should she dare to challenge him legally. Oh, the chilling depths of manipulation and control. As Cassie struggled to break free from Diddy's suffocating grip, she faced a relentless onslaught of manipulation and isolation. Diddy, described as an overpowering force, wielded his influence like a weapon, severing Cassie's ties to her support network and instilling a chilling fear for her safety. In a harrowing turn of events in 2018, Cassie accused Diddy of forcefully invading her sanctuary, subjecting her to unspeakable acts against her will. Yet, even after Cassie summoned the courage to escape his clutches, Diddy's menacing shadow loomed large, haunting her every move with relentless surveillance, just when it seemed. Diddy's troubles mounted to staggering heights with the emergence of yet another damning allegation. A woman, shrouded in anonymity within the legal labyrinth, stepped forward with a chilling account of assault dating back to the early 1990s in a chilling narrative. She recounted a fateful encounter with Diddy and our and crooner Aaron Hall at an MCI event, where their behavior took a dark turn. Invited to an alleged after-party at Hall's residence, the night descended into a nightmare as Jane Doe found herself coerced into unspeakable acts with Diddy, while her friend endured similar horrors at Hall's hands. Days later, Diddy allegedly unleashed a torrent of aggression upon Jane Doe, leaving her reeling in fear. 
fearing the consequences of speaking out. Another lawsuit looms, revealing yet more unsettling details of a 2003 encounter at Diddy's New Jersey recording studio. The tangled web of deceit and manipulation expands its reach across state lines, weaving a narrative of horror and betrayal. Oh, the plot thickens, plunging deeper into the abyss of depravity and deceit. The chilling echoes of our Kali saga reverberate in this haunting tale. It begins innocently enough with a young woman, identified only as Jane Doe, enjoying a night out at a Detroit lounge with a friend. Little did she know her fateful encounter with Harve Pierre would plunge her into a nightmare. Pierre touting his connections to Diddy lured Jane Doe into a sinister web of deceit, promising an introduction to the hip-hop icon himself. And just like that, Diddy extended a personal invitation, whisking Jane Doe away on his private jet to New York where darkness awaited. The lawsuit paints a chilling picture of Jane Doe's descent into hell. Touching down at Teterboro Airport, she was ferried in an SUV with Pierre and an ominous figure lurking in the shadows to Diddy's studio, where the trap was set. Legal documents unearthed by Rolling Stone reveal snapshots of that fateful night, with one haunting image capturing Jane Doe perched on Diddy's lap a stark reminder of the innocence stolen. As the night wore on, the air grew thick with menace. Jane Doe, drowning in a sea of alcohol, found herself ensnared in a nightmare of unwanted advances from Diddy, Pierre, and their shadowy accomplice. Their eyes bore into her, stripping away her agency with every lecherous glance. And then, in a sinister twist, Diddy escorted her to a restroom, a legal matter now unfolding in the hallowed halls of the Southern District of New York. Jane Doe, stripped of her dignity, her autonomy violated, cries out for justice in the face of unspeakable horror. Oh? The chilling details continue to unfold, painting a picture of darkness and despair. As the night descended into a hazy abyss, the individual's consciousness slipped away like sand through their fingers in a surreal moment of clarity. They glimpsed a chilling tableau in the restroom mirror a faceless figure from the airplane lurking in the shadows, while Diddy, the puppet master, Watch from his throne outside. The nightmare crescendoed as Pierre, the architect of their torment, imposed his will upon them, coercing them into unspeakable acts against their will. Alone and shattered, they found themselves crumpled on the cold restroom floor, a mere pawn in a sinister game of power and control. Eventually, with assistance, they were whisked away from the scene of their torment and transported back to the airport, where they were hastily flown back to Michigan. But the nightmare was far from over. In a startling legal twist, a lawsuit casts a damning spotlight on Diddy's home recordings and his empire, Bad Boy Entertainment. Miss Doe's memories of the return flight remain shrouded in a fog of confusion. Fragments of recollection piecing together a harrowing journey back home in the early hours of the morning. Meanwhile, amidst the chaos, producer Lil Rod Rod, once a close collaborator with Diddy on his acclaimed album Off the Grid, has turned on his former ally, filing a staggering $30 million lawsuit against the mogul. The legal drama unfolds, painting a grim portrait of betrayal and reckoning. Oh, the saga continues, each twist and turn plunging deeper into the abyss of scandal and deceit. In a bombshell revelation, the legal storm swirling around Diddy takes a catastrophic turn as producer Lil Rod Rod unleashes a torrent of allegations against the mogul, accusing Diddy of a litany of offenses, including harassment and intimidation. The lawsuit paints a damning portrait of a man consumed by power and privilege. Among the shocking accusations leveled against Diddy, Lil Rod Rod claims he was coerced into arranging meetings with SE workers and subjected to relentless pressure to engage in unwanted sexual activities, not just with these workers, but with others as well. But the horror doesn't end there. In a chilling twist, the lawsuit alleges that Diddy orchestrated a sinister scheme, spiking guests' drinks at his opulent parties without their knowledge. Screenshots purportedly reveal scenes of debauchery at Diddy's mansion, with girls and additional sex workers in attendance, some of whom were allegedly drugged at Diddy's behest. But the web of corruption extends far beyond Diddy himself, ensnaring several other high-profile individuals in its tangled embrace. 
From Diddy's close associate Christina Coram to Universal Music Group CEO Sir Lucian GR and former Motown Records CEO Ethiopia, the lawsuit paints a damning picture of a network of complicity and corruption. In a jaw-dropping revelation, Lil Rod Rod claims that GR was pressured into marriage amidst the chaos of this legal maelstrom, and as if that weren't enough, the lawsuit alleges that Motown Records, Love Records, and Universal Music Group collectively operated as part of a RICO enterprise with Diddy at the helm, turning a blind eye to his reign of terror. With the stakes higher than ever, Lil Rod Rod isn't just seeking justice. He is demanding retribution to the tune of a staggering $30 million in damages. Oh, the scandal deepens, each revelation plunging us further into the abyss of corruption and deceit. Amidst the whirlwind of allegations, Diddy's legal team is hitting back with full force, branding Jones's claims as nothing more than a desperate bid for attention. Sean Hawley, Diddy's attorney, is pulling no punches, asserting that they have concrete evidence to debunk Jones's fabrications and pointing out the conspicuous silence from Jones's lawyer. Tyrone Blackburn, with unwavering resolve, Hawley vows to tackle these exaggerated accusations head-on in the courtroom, promising to pursue legal recourse against those responsible for spreading falsehoods. But the plot thickens as Jones's lawsuit delves into the murky waters of his collaboration with Diddy. Painting a grim picture of life post-agreement with Diddy, Jones alleges a litany of harassment during his stays at Diddy's lavish residences across Florida, Los Angeles, and New York, even on a yacht in the U.S. Virgin Islands. The alleged mistreatment, including unwanted advances and touching, casts a dark shadow over Diddy's once glamorous empire. In a disturbing twist, Jones recounts being coerced into working inside Diddy's bathroom while the mogul showered behind a transparent glass enclosure a grotesque display of power and control. And when Jones attempted to seek help from Christina Coram, Diddy's trusted assistant, his pleas fell on deaf ears, dismissed as mere playful antics, but the allegations don't end there. Jones accuses Coram of complicity in Diddy's harassment, alleging that she colluded with the mogul to coerce him into a sexual relationship, forced to hire sex workers and engage in degrading activities to satisfy Diddy's demands, Jones paints a chilling portrait of manipulation and coercion. In a chilling detail, Jones describes Diddy's brazen use of a special bad boy baseball cap as a signal to sex workers, signaling his presence and sending Jones on a twisted recruitment mission. And as Jones grapples with rejection, Diddy's aggressive insistence and influence loom large, casting a sinister shadow over the hip-hop and business world. Oh, the scandal deepens, each revelation peeling back another layer of corruption and deceit. Jones's harrowing account delves even deeper into the web of manipulation and intimidation allegedly orchestrated by Combs. The lawsuit paints a chilling picture of Combs's abuse of power with Jones detailing threats of physical violence if he dared to defy Combs's commands. In a disturbing revelation, Jones alleges that Combs took pleasure in flaunting his ability to escape consequences, even boasting about evading punishment for past incidents. One such instance involved Combs allegedly admitting to his involvement in a nightclub shooting alongside rapper Shine in 1999, a dark chapter in Combs's history that ended with his acquittal on possession and bribery charges. Despite Shine's 10-year prison sentence, Jones felt utterly powerless in the face of Combs's influence, unable to refuse any of his demands. Combs's purported manipulation extended to frequent boasts about his connections in the music industry and with law enforcement, further cementing his stranglehold over Jones. But perhaps the most damning evidence lies in Jones's claim to possess video and audio recordings that corroborate his allegations against Combs, forced to record Combs at all times. Jones's cell phone became a tool for capturing Combs's alleged involvement in illegal activities with hundreds of hours of incriminating footage now in Jones's possession. Jones alleges that the breaking point came on February 2, 2023, when he awoke disoriented in bed with Combs and to sex workers, believing he had been assaulted. And when asked for comment, Jones's lawyer, Tyrone Black, offered a succinct response race, it's a locator the thing speaks for itself underscoring the gravity of the allegations laid out in the lawsuit.
Jones contends that he was effectively exploited under an assumed contract with Combs, left unpaid for his contributions to the Love album. The lawsuit argues that Combs, along with Love Records, Motown Records, and Universal Music Group, profited unfairly at Jones's expense, perpetuating a cycle of exploitation and abuse. Oh, the tangled web of corruption and greed unravels further with each disturbing revelation. This legal saga not only casts a glaring spotlight on Diddy but also implicates a cadre of high-profile figures, suggesting their complicity in the alleged misconduct. Among them is Cuba Gooding Jr., whose involvement adds another layer of complexity to the case. According to legal documents obtained by TMZ, Jones alleges that Diddy orchestrated unsettling encounters involving him and Cuba aboard Diddy's opulent yacht. In a troubling turn of events, Jones claims that Cuba's advances quickly escalated into uncomfortable territory, prompting Jones to push back against the unwelcome overtures. To bolster his assertion, Jones presents a photo showing Cuba embracing him, which he argues is evidence of Diddy's influence over Cuba and Diddy's failure to intervene and prevent Cuba from assaulting Jones. But the tangled web of allegations doesn't end there. Enter young Miami, embroiled in Jones's accusations, which he insists are supported by concrete evidence. Jones alleges that a relative or assistant of young Miami made and wanted advances toward him during a Thanksgiving gathering in 2022, which included Diddy, young Miami, and their respective entourages. In a disturbing incident, Jones recounts how this individual intruded into the bathroom while he was inside, leading to inappropriate physical contact and a palpably uncomfortable situation. Despite Jones's attempts to resist, the advances persisted, culminating in provocative behavior in front of Diddy and others. Adding another layer to the complexity, Jones claims that Young Miami was among those receiving compensation from Diddy for certain services, further entangling her in this intricate legal web. Oh? The drama reaches dizzying heights as the spotlight shifts to these additional players in the unfolding saga of accusations and recriminations. The saga takes a dramatic turn as Jones brings forth shocking allegations surrounding a shooting incident at Charlie's recording studio in Los Angeles in September 2022. According to Jones, he witnessed a friend of Diddy's son Justin getting shot mere feet away from him, with Diddy and Justin emerging from the bathroom shortly afterward. However, Jones alleges that instead of assisting the injured individual, Diddy coerced him into fabricating a false narrative about a drive-by shooting to mislead the police. In response, Justin Combs and his legal team are vehemently denying these allegations, labeling them as baseless and an attempt at extortion. They assert that the claims are entirely false and driven by a desire for financial gain threatening legal action against any defamatory statements aimed at the Combs family. But the controversy doesn't end there. Grammy-winning producer Stevia J, associated with Bad Boy Records, finds himself ensnared in Jones's allegations. Jones claims that Diddy exploited Stevia J's reputation to manipulate his feelings about his sexual orientation. Furthermore, Jones alleges that Diddy presented him with video footage purportedly showing Stevia J in an intimate situation with another man. However, the situation takes a bewildering turn when adult film actor Knockout intervenes on Twitter, clarifying that the images were of him, throwing a curveball into the narrative. Amidst this turmoil, Stevia J has taken action, retaining legal representation to address these contentious accusations. Oh, the plot thickens as new players enter the fray, each with their own version of events. The revelations surrounding Diddy and the web of allegations swirling around him indeed paint a complex and troubling picture. The parallels drawn with cases like Jeffrey Epstein's are particularly concerning, suggesting a pattern of manipulation and exploitation within certain circles of power and influence. The implication of other prominent figures in the music industry only adds to the intrigue and speculation. It's crucial that these allegations are thoroughly investigated and any wrongdoing brought to light. If there are indeed individuals using their status and influence to engage in illegal or unethical behavior, they must be held accountable.
The hope for transparency and justice is shared by many, and it's essential that the legal process unfolds diligently to uncover the truth. As for the connections hinted at in the lawsuit, speculation will undoubtedly continue until more concrete information is revealed. The public's interest in uncovering the truth reflects a desire for accountability and integrity within the music industry and beyond. It's a complex and evolving situation that warrants careful attention and scrutiny.